Andy Panko, owner of Tenon Financial. Welcome to Retirement Planning Demystified. When you donate to charity, you may be able to take a tax deduction for some or all of the donation. Sometimes donations are entirely tax deductible, but sometimes they're not deductible at all. This video will explain everything you need to know about the deductibility of charitable donations. And be sure to also watch my other video, How to Maximize Deductions for Charitable Donations. But before we start, remember this video is only general explanations and education. It's not specific tax, legal, or investment advice. Before considering acting on anything you see in this video, first consult with your tax, legal, or investment advisor. It's important to preface this discussion by saying you shouldn't give to charity if your sole intention is to try to reduce your taxes, because the amount of your potential deduction will not exceed the amount of your donation. In other words, don't give a dollar just to save yourself 30 cents, because you'd still be out 70 cents. Instead, the primary reason to make donations is because you're charitably inclined and genuinely want to help your favorite charitable organizations. The potential tax savings is just icing on the cake. It's also important to distinguish between charitable donations and gifts, which are not tax deductible. In the eyes of the IRS, a gift is when you give something of value to a family member, friend, or even a random stranger. There's nothing that says you can't give away your money or other belongings to any of these people, but there is no tax deduction for doing so. On the other hand, a charitable donation is when you give something of value to a qualified organization, and charitable donations are eligible for potential tax deductions. The IRS has a few classifications of entities that are considered qualified organizations. Here are the most common types. First are religious organizations like churches, synagogues, temples, and mosques. Next are nonprofit schools and hospitals. Additionally, you can make deductible donations to federal, state, or local governments if your contribution is solely for public purposes. For example, Paying property taxes or a sewer bill to your local municipality doesn't count as a charitable donation. But if you separately give money to your town and instruct them that the money can only be used for the construction of a new park they're building, that would be considered a charitable donation. Nonprofit entities that are established for charitable purposes are also qualified. These are the organizations that come to mind when you think of a typical charity, like the Salvation Army, American Red Cross, March of Dimes, or the United Way. And finally, War veterans organizations and fraternal societies can be qualified organizations. Another thing to keep in mind with charitable donations is that you can only get a tax deduction for giving money or property. You cannot get a deduction for volunteering your time or services. As an example, if you work in a professional services industry and typically bill $400 an hour, you can't donate a couple hours of your time or service to a charity and try to get a deduction of $800. None of it will be deductible. Another important point is that if you receive anything of value in return for your donation, you must subtract out the value of what you received and can only potentially deduct the rest. For example, if you donate $100 to charity and in return are given admission to a celebratory dinner the charity is hosting, you need to determine the value of that dinner and subtract it from the $100. Assume the value of the dinner is determined to be $40. In this case, only $60 of your $100 donation may be deductible. And it's also important to know the documentation or proof required for your donations. You can donate all you want in any given year, but if you want to take deductions for those donations, you need to have proper documentation or proof or evidence of the donations. The documentation needed depends on the type and size of the donation. All cash donations require proper documentation in order to be deductible. Regardless of the amount of your cash donation, the donation needs to be documented through either a bank record, such as a canceled check or bank statement, a receipt from the organization, or proof of donation shown on your pay stub if you donate directly through your paychecks. And then if the amount of your cash donation is $250 or more, you instead need what the IRS calls contemporaneous written acknowledgement of your donation. This basically means the organization needs to give you a written acknowledgement of how much you donated, when you donated it, whether they provided you any goods or services in return, and so forth. And you must receive that contemporaneous written acknowledgement before filing your tax return for that year. As for non-cash donations, the documentation requirement depends on the type and size of donation. For donations valued at less than $250, you either need a receipt from the organization or, if retaining a seat is not feasible, like if you dropped off a bag of things at their door when they weren't open, your own detailed and reliable written records of what you donated will be eligible documentation. For non-cash donations between $250 and $500, you are additionally required to receive contemporaneous written acknowledgement from the organization. For non-cash donations valued at greater than $500, up to $5,000, you must also fill out and submit a Form 8283 with your tax return that year. Form 8283 contains a detailed description of the property, 
its value, its condition, how and when you obtained it, your basis in the property, and a few other items of info. And finally, for non-cash donations whose value exceeds $5,000, you must do and provide all the previously mentioned forms of documentation, as well as obtain a written appraisal of the property from a qualified appraiser. Let's now walk through the maximum amount of charitable donation deductions you could potentially take each year. This gets a bit confusing as there are various limits that come into play. For most people, it's not likely these limits will actually be approached. But if you happen to be in a position where you meet or exceed one of these limits, they're good to know because you could potentially change your donation amount or timing to maximize your deductions. Here's a summary of the deductibility of donations to most types of qualified charitable organizations. Now I say most because donations to some types of organizations such as war veterans groups or fraternal societies have smaller deductibility limits. For the most part, regardless of whether you donate cash or property to such organizations, you're limited to deducting no more than 30% of your adjusted gross income, otherwise known as AGI. But for the majority of charities, higher deductibility limits apply. For example, if you donate cash, you can typically deduct the amount of the donation up to 60% of your AGI. Like if you have an AGI of $100,000 and you donate $70,000 of cash to your church, you can only take a deduction for $60,000 of it because that would be 60% of your AGI. And keep in mind, cash isn't only physical cash, it also includes donations you make by check, credit card payment, electronic bank transfer, and so forth. Another thing to note is that the 60% limit is increased for 2020. Under the coronavirus stimulus relief laws known as the CARES Act, you can take a deduction of up to 100% of your AGI in 2020 for cash donations you make during the year. The next type of donation is what's called a capital gain asset. This is basically any form of investment you own where its current price or fair market value is higher than what you originally paid and you've held the position for more than a year. Examples of this property type typically include things like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and real estate property held as an investment. As an example, assume you purchased some stock a decade ago for a total of $1,000 and now that stock is worth $10,000. This would be a capital gain asset. If you donate all the stock to a charity, there are two potential deductibility limits to be aware of. If you choose to take a deduction for the stock's current fair market value of $10,000, that deduction will be limited to 30% of your AGI. If you instead take a deduction for the stock's original cost of $1,000, that deduction will be limited to a higher threshold, specifically 50% of AGI. There's another type of investment asset known as an ordinary income asset. Like a capital gain asset, an ordinary income asset is also something like a stock, bond, mutual fund, or other investment asset. But the difference is these are assets you've held no more than a year. In other words, if you have a gain on these positions and you choose to sell them, you have a short-term capital gain. And short-term capital gains are taxed as ordinary income on your tax return. Hence, investment assets you hold for a short term, aka a year or less, are called ordinary income assets if you donate them. If you donate an ordinary income asset, the amount of your deduction is limited to 50% of your AGI. And you can typically only deduct a position's cost, not its fair market value. For example, assume you bought some stock three months ago for $1,000, and it has since increased in value to $1,500. If you were to donate all that stock to a charity, it would be considered an ordinary income asset and not a capital gain asset because you've only held it for three months. And because it's an ordinary income asset, you can only take a deduction for its $1,000 cost and not its $1,500 fair market value. The last type of asset is any other non-cash property that is neither a capital gain asset nor an ordinary income asset. This is typically tangible property such as clothes, home furnishings, automobiles, electronics, and so forth. But also, this category includes investment assets whose current prices or fair market values are less than what you paid for them. Unlike capital gain assets and ordinary income assets where fair market value is higher than your cost, the investments included in this last category have current values below their costs. In this case, you can only deduct the current fair market value, not the higher price you originally paid. Generally speaking, the maximum deduction you can take for all donations in this last category is going to be limited to 50% of your AGI. But there is potentially more to be aware of as there are different restrictions and limitations that come into play depending on the type of property you're donating. For example, if you're donating clothes, they need to be in good and wearable shape. You can't take a deduction for donating clothes that are destroyed or otherwise not able to be worn. And when donating a car, the amount of your deduction is going to be the lesser of the car's fair market value at the time you donated it, or if the charity subsequently sells it, the price they receive for it. Now that you know the maximum deductibility levels, 
Let's discuss what happens if you contribute cash as well as other different types of property where each of the things you donate has its own respective deductibility limit. In that case, you basically have to start with the highest deductibility limit and work down from there. For example, start with your cash contributions. Assume you have an AGI of $100,000 and here's the three different deductibility limits of 60%, 50%, and 30%. The largest amount of cash donations you can deduct in normal years is 60% of your AGI, which would be a limit of $60,000 in this case. But assume you only donate $40,000 of cash. That's fine because that's within the 60% limit. But then what if you want to also donate some appreciated stock you've held for many years? Assume the stock is worth $20,000 and you originally paid $10,000 for it. If you want to deduct the stock's fair market value of $20,000, it will be a capital gain asset subject to the 30% of AGI limit. But you already more than passed that 30% limit by making your cash donations. Therefore, you can't deduct the stock donation at its fair market value. But Remember, you can instead deduct capital gain assets at their cost as opposed to fair market value. And if you use cost, you can then deduct up to 50% of your AGI. In this case, the cost of that stock was $10,000, which means you can still deduct that $10,000 because when you stack that on top of the $40,000 of cash you donated, you don't exceed 50% of your AGI. However, even if you exceed your deductibility limits, that doesn't mean you can't still donate to charities. It just means you can't take a tax deduction for it or at least not that year. Thankfully, the IRS lets you carry forward deductibility to future years so you can apply those deductions to subsequent tax returns, but you can only carry them over for five years. They won't last forever. All right, so now that you know all about the various types of charitable deductions and the maximum deductibility of each, how do you know when you can actually deduct donations on your tax return? You'll notice I said throughout this video that your donations may be deductible or are potentially deductible, that's because deductibility of your donations will depend on whether you itemize deductions or use the standard deduction on your tax return. The IRS lets you potentially deduct a few different things on your tax return. Specifically, the items on Schedule A of your tax return are what's eligible to be deducted. As you can see here, you're allowed to deduct medical and dental expenses if they exceed a certain percentage of your AGI. You can also deduct a certain amount of your state and local income taxes. Mortgage and investment interest may also be deductible. And here's where you would deduct your cash and non-cash charitable donations. Also, there are a couple other less common items that may be eligible for a deduction. After adding together all of your deductions on Schedule A, you arrive at your total itemized deductions. But in an effort to make the tax return preparation process more streamlined, the IRS allows you to instead take what's called a standard deduction. Here are the standard deductions for the 2020 tax year. As you can see, if you're single, the standard deduction is $12,400. For couples who are married and file a joint tax return, the standard deduction is $24,800. And for single filers who are able to file as head of household, it's $18,650. Also, there are additional amounts of standard deduction that can be claimed if you're 65 or older as of December 31st, 2020. For married persons who file a joint return, there's an additional $1,300 per person who is 65 or older. For single or head of household filers, it's an extra $1,650 if you're 65 or older. When doing your tax return, you're going to want to use whichever form of deduction is higher as that will give you the lowest tax bill. In other words, if the sum of your itemized deductions is larger than your standard deduction, you'll want to use your itemized deductions. But if your standard deduction is higher, you'll want to use that instead. This is why I've been saying your charitable donations may be deductible, because if you end up using the standard deduction, then you're not really getting any deduction for your donations, because whether you donate it or not, you'd be able to claim the standard deduction just the same. It's only when your itemized deductions exceed your standard deduction that you actually get credit for the deduction shown on your Schedule A. In my other video, How to Maximize Deductions for Charitable Donations, I discuss some planning opportunities that help ensure you end up itemizing your deductions so that you get the most deductibility as possible for your charitable donations. Until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so you can be the first to know when new videos are posted. And don't forget to subscribe to my monthly newsletter, Retirement Planning Insights, which provides informative retirement planning tips and info. Also, be sure to join my free Facebook group, Taxes and Retirement, where you can learn all about tax-efficient retirement planning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.